And Lord, thank you that we're able to come to church to worship you and to thank you for your greatness and your goodness. Because despite all we have faced in the last couple of years, not just with our personal challenges, but with the global challenges in terms of the COVID-19 threat and the devastation that sport, you have still been here with us. You have been uh, able today to look after the world in your more great manifest way that we still have food on our tables. We still have crops in the field. We still have uh, animals in the fields as well. Lord, we, we thank you that you are able to still sustain this world despite all the issues of man-made uh, environmental situations. The world is still sustainable and still gives us a way of life and our hope for the future. We praise you and we thank you today as we reflect on the farmers, the farming community, the workers, the transport, uh, logistics hubs, uh, the supermarket, both everyone who uh, is involved in terms of bringing that food to the table. So we might have sustenance, we might go out and do other jobs, whether that be in IT, whether that be medicine, whatever our role, teaching, nursing, uh, you know, commercial practices, professional services. We thank you, God, because it comes initially from our sustenance. Because without that sustenance, we won't have the energy, we won't have the life to make this world a better place. We thank you, Jesus. In your name we ask it. Amen and amen. We will follow the uh, leaflet that's been given. I hope everyone has got one. Is there anybody who needs one? Because we might have some spares still at the back, I, I hope. <laughs> okay. All right. So shall we? Uh, we will have a look at the leaflet. And as you can see, there are various aspects as a congregation you will be taking part in as well. God is good. All the time. All the time. Oh. Amen. <laughs>
Let us confess our forgetfulness of the needs of the poor and repent of the ways in which we waste the resources of the world. God has blessed us, but still God's children go hungry. Lord, have mercy. Lord have mercy. God has blessed us, but still the poor cry out for justice. Christ, Christ. have mercy. Christ have mercy. God has blessed us, but still we see inequality and oppression in the earth. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Eternal God, you come this year with your goodness and you give us the fruits of the earth in their season. Grant that we may use them to your glory for the relief of those in need and for our own well-being through Jesus Christ, your Son, our God. Amen. And now Becky will give a talk on our Brazilian harvest. Uh, Jeff might. Yeah, I'm, I, think I, I think I'll introduce Becky. Yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, I also didn't introduce myself. Most of you would know me by now. But I'm Daniel Khan, and I'm a member of the Oasis worship team. <laughs> I remember yeah. we were told we should be um, introducing ourselves. <laughs> Thank you.
Right. Well, it's good to have you here with us again, Becky. Yeah. Uh, how is Ivaldo doing? He's all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's getting on. <laughs> good. Obviously, uh, Ivaldo is out in Brazil at the moment, and uh, Becky is living in New York. Uh, I mean, I think I think Ivaldo may have the better deal. Well, yeah, it's getting warmer now, so maybe. <laughs> yes, whereas it's getting colder here, isn't it? Right. Um, what I've asked Becky to talk about this morning is uh, just uh, her experience. I, I've titled it a Brazilian harvest, but uh, um, Becky assures me that they don't really do harvest in Brazil, <laughs> although they must harvest their crops. Yes. So there is a kind of harvest. So I'm going to hand over to Becky and then I just want to then we'll have our Bible reading after, uh, which is uh, the one about do not worry from uh, the Gospel of Matthew. Uh, and then I just have a few reflections to share on that passage. So, uh, Becky, yeah, if yeah. you go up there, where there's a microphone. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, yeah, so Jeff asked me to um, share with you all a bit about Brazilian harvest. Um, the harvest in Brazil, especially the northeast where we live, um, they celebrate it more, but it's a little different to um, England. Um, this is it's going to be due to the fact that we live in the, summer, the southern hemisphere, so the harvest is a bit of a, a different timing. Um, but normally we celebrate it in June, and we celebrate it during a festival, the uh, Festa Junia, which um, encompasses the three Catholic saints, um, St. John, St. Peter, and I think St. Anthony. <laughs> um, and uh, it's basically under the guise of the main saint that they celebrate called uh, St. John, San Juan. Um, and during this time, it's when the farmers in the Sertan or the uh, countryside, very far into the, the state, because the state is about the size of uh, Hungary, so it's a very big state. And during that time, the uh, people in the Sertan, they harvest all the corn, the sweet corn, which is a very and um, staple part of the northeastern diet and they use it in a lot of different dishes there's a lot of very traditional foods such as kanjika or, or um, uh, mangaza which is like um, a corn a sweet corn pudding there's traditional sweet corn which is thrown on the barbecue the fire which they have um there's palmonia which is i don't know if you've ever eaten tamales which is like a colombian version it's like a steamed sweet corn in a in a, a corn sort of meat um there's also tapioca which is um like a sort of little crepe that they put um really delicious things in there's different cakes so they make sort of um sweet corn cake they make uh pedimoleti which is like a really quite bitter cake it's not my favorite um <laughs> and they sing um lots of traditional uh, songs, um, there's a lot of different music artists, a particularly famous one is Luis Gonzaga, you can look him up, he sings a lot of traditional for home music, which is the rhythm of San Juan. And normally people build um, bonfires outside their houses and people have fireworks. And it's one of my favourite festivals um, in the Brazilian calendar. And it's a time when all the family comes together, they dance, they feast, Brazilians are just the best party. Celebrate the harvest and to bring to come together as families. People dress up in checkered shirts. Um, they paint their faces. The girls wear um, sort of like bunches in their hair, and the boys wear straw hats and they they dance the poho together. Um, and it's just a really great time, and it's one of my favourite times in Brazil. Um, and I'm going to leave up some pictures at the end afterwards at the back so you can see. Um, but yes, yeah, it's, a, it's a great traditional festival in the northeast, and I would recommend it um, if you were to go. Um, it also rains a lot during that time. You can I hear a lot of Brazilians at the time saying, oh, San Pedro, you need to stop raining because it's always raining all the time. Um, so yeah, so that is the traditional festival of the northeast. Uh, in Brazil, and it fits in with the, the reading today um, for me in the sense that there's such an abundance of food and people come together and um, it just really symbolises the kind of 
you know, you don't need to worry. This all of this abundance and God always provides um, for us. Thank you, Becky. Now Claire's going to come and read from the Bible. Gospel is Matthew chapter 6. Therefore, I bid you put away anxious thoughts about food and drink to keep you alive and clothes to cover your body. Surely life is more than food, the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow and reap and store in barns. Yet your heavenly father feeds them. You are worth more than the birds. Is there a man of you who by anxious thought can add a foot to his height? And why be anxious about your clothes? Consider how the lilies grow in the fields. They do not work. They do not spin. And yet I tell you, even Solomon, in all his splendor, was not attired like one of these. But if that is how God clothes the grass in the fields, which is there today, and tomorrow is thrown on the stove, will he not all the more clothe you? How little faith you have. No, do not ask anxiously, what are we to eat? What are we to drink? What are we to wear? All these are the things for the heathen to run after, not for you because your heavenly father knows you need them all. Set your mind on God's kingdom and his justice before everything else and all the rest will come to you as well. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Claire. Thank you, Becky, and uh, welcome to both you and your dad, uh, who's uh, trapped, brought you all this way, not from Brazil, obviously, but uh, to be with us today. And uh, it got me thinking, as I was thinking about Harvest and Brazil, uh, it got me thinking back to way back in 2018, when I had the privilege of uh, visiting Brazil with my family um, as part of my study leave. And uh, one of the things about uh, my study leave was that we were invited to spend a week at uh, Irakambi, which is a, uh, well, how should I describe it? It's, it's a reserve uh, where a couple, Binka and Robin Labretti, have uh, developed a populate the uh, landscape with wildlife and trees and flora and fauna, I think is the phrase that we use. But no, who knows what flora and fauna are? Um, so anyway, their whole, their whole purpose is to recover the rainforest in that area. And uh, they're planting trees by the, by the thousands a year. It's not a huge area, although uh, it, in, in a day of traveling around uh, in, in the back of a, a Land Rover, um, holding on for dear life because the road was not exactly uh, flat. Uh, we didn't actually cover us, go back over a place we'd been before. So a uh, whole day's traveling without uh, going over the same old ground. Um, so the thing, the thing about it was, was that that is all about uh, encouraging and maintaining uh, the, the natural environment, the ecology 
of, uh, of the Brazilian rainforest. So it's a north, it's the Atlantic rainforest. Uh, so I think you're you're more near the yeah Atlantic is the one that you're yeah not the other one what just yeah uh, anyway um, anyway so and obviously in a rainforest it rains it does rain and sense the name and uh, it did rain whilst we were there but fortunately only during the night although it rained it didn't just drizzle it rained um, and. Uh, and so when you went out in the morning, uh, everywhere was just mud uh, because the roads are not uh, tarmac or anything. So, but the thing about it was that really encouraged me was just the, how, how glorious God's creation was. How many different species, how many different plants and trees and how beautiful it all looked, the color and our Bible passage this morning uh, speaks in, in, the, in one translation, says, do not worry. Do not worry. Now, I don't know about any of you here today, but there are times when I worry. There are times when things get on my mind and uh, I can't get rid of them. There are times I'm concerned maybe about a person or about something that's happening at that time. And it's hard not to worry. Worrying is something that comes quite naturally to us. We seem to be able to do it at the, just like that. But what does Jesus say? Jesus says, do not worry. He says, do not worry. Because he will provide. He will get us through whatever situations we're in. He will be with us when we're facing challenges. So it's, in one sense, it's easy. We do not worry because we know God is there and God is supporting us and God is with us. But of course, we're human and we do worry. Things do get on our minds. No matter how hard we try, we often can't dismiss them. And Jesus tells us not to worry because he promises us that he will provide. He promises us. He promises us that there will be clothes for us to wear. And they're the two things that he, he uh, mentions. One, because uh, he clothes the flowers of the field, the lilies, uh, in all their glory, because God's creation is glorious. But when we look around the world, there are people who don't have enough to eat. There are people for whom it's difficult to get clothing to cover themselves. So what's that saying to us? What does that say to us at a time like this? I think it's one of fairness. I think it's one of greed. There is absolutely enough stuff to go around everybody in the world. But there are places in the world that get a far more, far more than their fair share compared to other places. It is about distribution, fair distribution of the wealth we have. Now, Many people are happy with a lot less than what we live with. I mean, we've panicked, haven't we? When, at the, remember at the beginning of, uh, of the lockdown with COVID, when we couldn't get hold of, uh, of uh, what, what was that? Pastor and toilet rolls. We couldn't get hold of pastor and toilet. And what happened? We panicked. Everybody rushed to the supermarket and bought as much as they could. I even heard of people um, selling it on eBay at inflated prices to make a quick book. We panicked. And yet, God says to us, do not worry. 
I will provide. I will give you what you need. That's the challenge. We need to hold on to that promise that God sustains us. God provides for us. And God will be with us in whatever situation we find ourselves. Therefore, do not worry. As I say, it's easy to uh, to uh, to say it. I say it dead easy. Do not worry. But it's far harder to not actually worry. So what can we do about that? I think one of the ways in which we can reduce the amount we worry or our need to worry is that is to actually constantly be in touch with God through in prayer, in worship, and in all the time that we spend with him. The more time we spend with him in prayer and in worship, the more we can trust him. The more that relationship with him grows and develops to the extent that we do not need to worry anymore. So, as we gather in our harvest this, uh, this year, as we receive in a few moments the gifts that we're giving to the York Food Bank, the people who, I'm guessing, are often worried about where their next meal is going to come from. I don't think anybody rushes to the food bank as a, an easy way to get food. In fact, I know for a fact that many are reluctant to use food banks. I do know they're very valued and very well used. So we're collecting for York Food Bank and uh, so the gifts that we brought for harvest will go to that. The non-perishable gifts obviously. We can't take fresh food to the food bank. So let us uh, let us receive the gifts of the people. Father, we give you thanks. We give you thanks and praise for all the good gifts that you give to us, for all that sustains us, for all that takes away any worries we have. And we thank you for these gifts now and for the work of York Food Bank. 
We pray, Lord, that you would use these gifts to bring glory to your name and minister to the needs of those who are without. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So now we're going to pray and there are responses to make. For rain and sun and insects to pollinate crops, for farmers who work with nature and preserve the beauty and diversity of God's creation, and for wild creatures which enjoy the harvest of berries, nuts, grains and seeds. For the soil, rich and precious, home to countless living creatures which maintain fertility and give us food and life. Yeah. For growing awareness that we all depend on the earth for our daily food and fuel, and for the increasing number of people who want to eat local food and have closer links with food producers. Yeah. For wisdom to live in ways that will slow down climate change and keep the rains falling in their due season. The caution in manipulating the building blocks of life and transferring genes between species. And part of God's creation with responsibilities to care for God's earth and our fellow creatures, including farm animals both during their lives and in their deaths at abattoirs. Bring peace to the killing fields of war, turn scorched earth to green, so that people can sow their seeds and harvest their crops and live in harmony with their neighbours. Bring justice to those crushed by debt, forced to grow cash crops for us to consume, tempted to waste fertile land growing drugs and tobacco, and denied access to land for growing their own food. Lord, send forth your spirit. Send us out into the world in service to God's creatures as disciples of Jesus who bless bread and wine at the Last Supper. Bread which earth has given and human hands have made and wine fruit of the vine and work of human hands. Lord, send forth your spirit. We stand to sing, my Jesus, my Savior.
So as we stand, we say together, the earth has yielded its harvest. God, our God, has blessed us. You visit the earth and water it. You soften the ground with showers. You crown the year with your goodness. The meadows are clothed with sheep. The valleys stand so thick with corn. They shout for joy. Sing. The earth has yielded its harvest. God, our God, has blessed us. And we sing together. We plow the fields and scatter. <laughs> titled The Fall and Rise of Emily Moore Tower. Emily Moore Tower has for generations transmitted TV and major telephone route traffic. So when the tower collapsed in 1969, it was something of a disaster. This talk by David comes from his first-hand experience as network controller for the GPO at the time of the incident. Admission is three pounds ahead, payable on the door. 
and will include a hot drink. And I know from past talks that David has done, that would be an excellent uh, talk. So it's well worth going to if you're available. Uh, next uh, Sunday, uh, there will be Oasis will take place at St. Giles Church, Cottonthorpe, and uh, all are welcome to go there. It's good to see so many here today, and uh, wonderful that you're all here. Um, but I do also have some Bands of Marriage to publish. Now, uh, they have already been published at St. Giles Church, Cottonthorpe this morning, um, but uh, I'll do them again now as well. And so I published the Bands of Marriage between Joseph Blees and Catherine Hooper, and between Daniel Sowery and Melissa Horton. Both of these are for the third time of asking if anyone knows any reason why these two couples may not lawfully be joined together in holy matrimony, you are to declare it now. You got something to say, lady? Oh. <laughs> I'm going to pray for them now. They need it. Uh, so, Heavenly Father, we pray for Joe and Catherine and for Dan and Mel and just ask your blessing upon them in these final weeks before their wedding day. Father, we ask that you would be with them to have a wonderful ceremony, but most of all, that you will be preparing them for their, the rest of their lives together, their marriage. And we do ask your blessing upon them, in Jesus' name, Amen. So a final blessing. May God, our creator, who clothes the lilies and feeds the birds of the air, bestow on you his care and increase the harvest of your righteousness and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you, remain with you, and all those whom you love, now and forevermore. Amen. And our final song is, You Shall Go Out With Joy. A hint in that title. <laughs> Let's all go out with John. <laughs>